I'm about as real as they come. All my beats tailored by Joe. Digital. Maserati Rick in Detroit, Deep. convertible bird in Miami, graduated summa cum laude, strip club made a tsunami, Carlton Hines with the ball game, Rayful Edmonds with the snowflakes, Craig Pettis in the M-Town, Sal Magluta with the boat game, Sal Cone with the cocaine, like Freeway Ricky with the plug game, like Monster Cody in South Central, Larry Davis from Close Range. But now the Savannah Police Wait. Department is reporting its own analysis is showing crime has dropped since its new precinct patrol plan went into effect just about a month ago. Officers are doing a lot more legwork these days, walking beats the old-fashioned way. The idea is to increase police presence on the streets and establish better contact with the people who live in the neighborhoods. Better communication helps fight crime. And uh, as of today, the 23rd, uh, we've had uh, a reduction in the overall crime in the city of Savannah, 7% reduction. New precinct stations will be open in four areas of the city. It was a big topic in the mayoral forum tonight. We'll tell you about the Savannah's that Savannah's growing violent crime problems. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. We are obviously not going to be talking about trees here. Instead, the decades of deceit and neglect that dominated the thinking of our local elected officials and law enforcement when it came to the growing threat of gangs. To be fair, there were a couple of hit and run law enforcement attacks on gangs, led mostly by federal agents when rival gangs were shooting each other in the streets. The half dozen people injured in a gang revenge shooting at the Coastal Empire Fair did become the point of no return for Savannah. At that moment, many on the city council and county commission, about to see the unspoken become the talk of the town, took a deep breath and have been so holding it ever our since. Gang problem for so long save the Savannah economy? Well, it certainly saved our tourists from associating the word gang with our community, but it cost those of us who live here perhaps hundreds of lives and certainly our quality of life. By Metro's own estimates, a successful counter to gangs here could cut the violent crime rate by more than 60 percent. 60 percent! Our murder rate already rivals Chicago and New Orleans, according to the latest FBI numbers. With our new police administration and DA, yes, a tree has finally been planted. For it to grow, it'll be up to us to hold our elected officials accountable for their past and their current a efforts to keep up. A notorious gang member in prison for 14 life sentences. So why was he almost let out of prison days ago? On News 3's Andrew Davis has been following this story from the beginning. Yeah, Christopher Murray actually may not be a name you recognize, but his boss is famous infamous here in Savannah. His boss is Ricky Jivens. Ricky Jivens sits in prison for the rest of his life right now for his crimes. Murray was sentenced to life, but still almost walked our streets just days ago without a last minute change. It was a little boy's birthday party and he took the money from the boy's birthday party and then stuck everybody into the refrigerated area. Um, and he was very proud of it and bragging. That's just one of the crimes Christopher Murray was convicted of in 1993. 40 different charges, armed robbery, kidnapping, assault with a deadly weapon, some connected to a police shootout after that pizza robbery. After he was caught, Williams then said, quote, he could have had them cops if I really wanted them, but my SKS jammed. Judge Michael Carp sentenced him to 14 life terms plus 115 years, but in July of this year, he almost got out. The person, the judge, who um, was elected and put in place listened to all the evidence and the victims and everybody and sentenced this defendant, gave him a sentence that's appropriate and the Board of Pardons and Parole should adhere. Nothing has changed. Chatham County District Attorney Meg Heap's office protested that release just five days before it happened. The Board of Pardons and Parole says it canceled the parole after getting, quote, new information in the case. Heap says the board isn't using all the information they can get before deciding which violent criminals are released. And someone, you know, who is not here is making that decision where they decide that, well, life really isn't life. Life is what we're going to give you. Or, you know, five years isn't five, so we'll give you, you know, a year. Um, it, it's very frustrating. The board tells me that there is no overcrowding in the prison system. So I would say, then why don't we keep our murderers in there? Pardons Parole Board tells me they must provide, quote, meaningful consideration to parole eligible inmates. Murray himself was denied four times before this year. Heap says the board agreed to give prosecutors and families 30 days notice of any possible parole on violent criminals, but they've not followed up on that. Andrew Davis, WSAV News 3. Yo, yo, we back. It's your boy, Pop a lot. 
Mob ties. We on our way to Georgia with it. Savannah. All my G's from Savannah. Y'all get in the comment box. Y'all niggas know y'all bang heavy. Now, today we are going to be covering a guy by the name of Ricky, Little Ricky Jivens. Now, Mr. Jivens is only going to be Trapper Hall of Fame, if not number one Trapper to come out of Savannah. If I'm lying, anybody from Savannah, y'all get in the comment box and explain it. Now, this story is going to take place circa 1991 when crack was king. If we got anybody that that's that age, you guys kind of remember these times. This is when <clears throat> niggas will kill you for stepping on a Jordans type shit. It, it was just wild out here. Um, it, it was just a, a all time high with violence. It was a next level with the money. Uh, and just to kind of put that in perspective, so in 1990, the city of Savannah had 35 homicides. In 1991, they had 59 homicides. In 1992, they had 24 homicides. In 1993, they had 12 homicides. So just telling you uh the chronologizing the timeline of everything that happened you would automatically see ricky jivens's impact on the community as if if it wasn't for the murders that was attributed to his organization in 1991 would have finished right around 39 so that's going to put them four above what they were in 1990. So that being said, the authorities are going to say his organization was responsible for upwards of 20 homicides and they were almost on some, just like I said, the stepping on Jordans. Uh, they were an old school organization, so old school where one of the ways, or I should say the only way of initiation was you had to commit a murder, like, bro. That's what they was on. And that's that old early 90s type shit. Nowadays, it's like you hang out with the niggas for about two weeks and you part of you, you gang or you somebody cousin and you gang. Uh, Ricky Jibbins didn't work like that. <laughs> you got to put in some work on your hand. Wow, wow, wow shit. So with that, um, and not to mention uh, right around 1991, it looked like it was some kind of election going on. One thing I'm going to tell you about um, towns, especially small towns, and not to mention Savannah, uh, is a big tourist destination. So once you start messing with the dollars, with the tourist money, and once they have an elect, uh, like an election up and coming, you know somebody's going to get swept up. And the person that was swept up and blamed looked like it's going to be the Ricky Jivens organization because with that dramatic decrease in the crime rate in 1992 and in 1993 um which it went less than half the year after he was arrested and now let's put this into perspective as well his organization was only functioning from 1989 to 1991 so this is a very short time 30 is going to say they was making upwards of a million dollars um per year and i guess you kind of do the math. A million dollars in 1989 is going to be, I would say, 15 to 20. All my mathematicians, may I get in the comment box? Let me know if I'm wrong or right. Now, and it, I kind of, what I take from the story, this is a direct correlation of everything that's going on right now. Savannah has always been one of them cities that's about it. Everybody talk about Atlanta, um, but the shit about it, you, you probably going to get jacked in Savannah almost a, like you got the same probability. I know in 1991, it was right up there, according to the feds, as far as murder capitals with the amount of people that they had. So it's definitely a dangerous city. And still, y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter. It's your boy pop a lot, P O P underscore a underscore L O T. And we're going to be back with some more real trill spill shit. Y'all already know what it is. It's the mob. Mob, 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 ties.